Hi everyone, welcome back for another bedtime story. I'm getting all snuggly on my snow my sofa, not my snowfa, it's a sofa, and I'm getting ready for our stories. I've got my koala ready to snuggle down and listen to listen to the story. And he's very excited because and I'm a little bit sad actually because it's the final story out of our book called A Really Incredible Feast. So I'm a bit sad but I can't wait to find out what the last story is. And of course we're going to have another psalm from our psalms for young children. And we'll finish with a page from what every child should know about prayer and we're starting a new section tonight so that's exciting too so snuggle down get cozy like me get ready and then i will start okay so our final story out of a really incredible feast and do you know what it's called it's called a really incredible feast and you can find that in the bible in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. They'd walked a long way. They needed a break. So Jesus and friends sat down by the lake. They'd shared the good news while on their way, but now it was time to eat and pray. They needed some quiet, some calm, some hush, a break from the hustle, the bustle and rush. But people kept coming and making requests. How were they meant to get any rest? So then Jesus said, let's go, come with me. And they got in a boat, crossed over the sea. They landed their boat near fields of green. They'd made it away from the crowds unseen. But the plan didn't work. Somehow the word spread. The people found out, so they all ran ahead. Round the side of the lake to the green grassy field with hopes to hear more or see more healed. Despite being tired and needing to stop, Jesus didn't grump or get in a strop. He'd brought his friends here so that they could find space but looked on the crowd with compassion and grace. He spoke of God's kingdom, healed those who were ill, and dealt with all their questions until his friends pointed out it was getting quite late and maybe, just maybe, it was time that they ate. Send the people over there to find a cafe or a shop or a village or perhaps we may then finally find some time to pray and talk with you by the end of the day. But Jesus said, no, don't send them away. You find them food and tell them to stay. Philip was shocked, an impossible feat to find enough food for thousands to eat. To earn enough money for all that nosh, it'd take half a year to collect all the dosh. Besides, just to spend it, well, that would be rash. And anyway, Jesus, we don't have the cash. So then Jesus said, we'll feed the whole lot. We just need some bread. Go and see what we've got. We'll do as you wish, the disciples said, and found two fish and five loads of bread. The young boy had brought them to eat for his tea, enough for one, perhaps two, but no more than three. And absolutely clearly, there couldn't be a doubt, not nearly enough for the crowd who'd turn out. Sit everyone down, now that's your task. Bewildered and baffled, they did as he asked. In fifties and hundreds, they sat on the ground. They wondered and watched and looked all around. What's going to happen? Some of them mumbled. They were so hungry, their tummies rumbled. 
Jesus held up the fish and the bread. He looked up to heaven with them overhead. He said thanks to God and called out loud, Share it out, feed the whole crowd. Peckish and puzzled, the people did stare, and as the food passed, they took their share. And right to the last, each and every one munched and crunched and chomped along. They had their fill of the young boy's tea until they were full and smiling with glee. When everyone had eaten, there were lots of bits all over the floor, both bread and fish. The disciples gathered up every last piece. They managed to fill up a basket each. Twelve baskets filled to the brim with bits. Five thousand men plus women and kids. All were well fed. They'd had plenty to eat. Jesus fed them all. An incredible feast. Okay, and then another psalm for young children. And this time, it's Psalm 32. <clears throat> when I do something wrong, I tell you about it, God. And when you forgive me, I feel calm again. And finally, a page from what every child should know about prayer. And our new section tonight, starting tonight, is called God's People Have Always Prayed. Moses prayed to see God's glory. Moses already knew a lot about God, but he wanted to know God better. So Moses prayed, show me your glorious presence. And that's from the Bible in Exodus chapter 33 verse 18. Moses wanted to see the glory of God. So God hid Moses behind a rock and passed by so that Moses could catch a glimpse of his goodness. When we pray and ask God to show us his glory, he points us to Jesus. So the word, and that's Jesus, became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. And that's from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14. I can pray. God, thank you for showing your glory to the world by sending Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for another bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed this evening. Before we go, I'm going to say a prayer. So join me in praying and remember... However you want to do your Amen, just go ahead. Feel free to do it whichever way you want. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that we can talk to you. Thank you that when we do the wrong thing, we can tell you about it. And when you forgive us, we feel much calmer and much happier. So God, help us to remember that to come to you and say we've done the wrong thing, we've made the wrong decision, because we shouldn't be frightened, Lord, because when we share that with you and tell us we've done wrong, all you say is, I forgive you. Try to do better, because I love you. So we thank you for that love. And Lord, we thank you for Jesus, who came to be among us. Thank you that... Uh, we can pray to you and you will reveal Jesus to us. Amen. That was a good amen, Koala. Okay, thank you very much. Now join me tomorrow. It's Good Friday tomorrow, so we've got a bit of an extra special store, bedtime story time. So join me tomorrow. All I've got left to say is... Night-night, sleep tight, 
sweet dreams, God bless, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everyone.